Wells are important in hydrogeology because they give us the ability to access aquifers. This allows us to pump water out of aquifers. We can sample the water for composition. We can also conduct tests that allow us to estimate the parameters and the properties of aquifers. So to get started looking at wells, I'd like to take a look at some basic processes and some nomenclature. So this is a well here in cross section. The well is, is tapping into an aquifer that's under static conditions. So we see the water level in the well right there and the water level out here in the aquifer and there at the same level. So there's no flow in this situation. And then the idea is that we'll put in a pump and start pumping the water out of the well. So we have a volumetric flow rate Q that is uh, being removed from the well. That will cause the water level to fall in the well, like so, and the water level in the formation out of the aquifer will also fall, like this. So this would be the new water tape under conditions of pumping. And so the difference between the static water level that we started with and the water level during pumping is called the drawdown. That increases during pumping typically. The region that is affected by pumping, the reason where drawdown has occurred, is called the radius of influence, or the distance out from the well is the radius of influence. And under ideal conditions, if the aquifer is homogeneous and isotropic, then the radius of influence will be constant. And if you revolve it around the axis of the well, you end up with a, a conical shape uh, depression. And indeed, so this is called a cone of depression right here. And these would be contours of equal hydraulic head or equal amount of drawdown. So this would be the smallest amount of drawdown out here and then as we go inward towards the well, we get more and more drawdown. If we take a look at this cone of depression in a perspective view and we slice it in half, then we've got this image here. This is the cone of depression under idealized conditions. And under this condition, what you have here is that the hydraulic head shown here is a logarithmic function of the radial distance away from the well. That's what I show. Okay, so the typical idealized cone of depression is a log function of the radial distance, and then we revolve that around an axis, and that's the idealized cone of depression. And I think you can kind of see this is coming up and kind of flaring out. So this cone of depression looks kind of like the bell of a trumpet. Some other terms up here. The flow rate divided by the drawdown at the well is called the specific capacity. So if we look over here, I've labeled the drawdown at the well as delta P sub W, and that's right. In addition, the power that it takes to pump the well will depend on the flow rate and the drawdown at the well, and it'll be proportional to um, the product of these two times a constant. This is the, the unit weight of the water. So the power depends on how rapidly we pump and how much drawdown is occurring in the well. Basically how high we have to lift the water. And that pumping power, it should be proportional to. It's not going to be directly equal to. Um, and I guess another thing I'd like to point out here is the importance of the drawdown at the well. The way that we're going to generally configure things, well at least the way that that wells are configured in some cases is to have a pump that's submerged down in the well and then either a hose or a pipe extends up from the pump and out of the well. Okay, so when we're doing that, the water is entering the pump here and then getting pumped up this hose or pipe. And so in order for this to work, there has to be water that is overlying the pump. And so if the drawdown in the well gets to be great enough so that this intake at the pump is no longer submerged, then the well won't pump water. And so when this happens, the pump is not really doing its thing, so that's, that's not good. But it gets even worse because many pumps are designed to be cooled by water that flows past them. And so if they're no longer pumping water but they're still running, they lose the ability to cool themselves and they can quickly overheat and become damaged. So 
understanding the drawdown in a well and the depth to the pump uh, will be important things to uh, being able to maintain just the general functioning of the well. Some pumps or some wells are set up with pumps up at the ground surface and they put a tube down to the down into the well and lift the water out. And in this case, the pump won't be damaged if the drawdown gets to be too large. But there's a limit to how far up a pump can lift water. And so as the drawdown increases, this pump becomes less and less effective. Eventually, there'll be some drawdown where the pump can no longer lift any water. So understanding the drawdown at the well will have important implications to the ability for a pump to remove water from the well. OK, so we'll be interested in several different types of different aspects of well performance. We might want to predict the drawdown and or the flow rate. And if we do this, we need to know aquifer properties like the hydraulic conductivity, the transmissivity, the stortivity. And if we can do this, if we can predict this, then we can use our predictions to design wells, design dewatering, anticipate what the, the effect of wells might be on neighboring wells. So if we're causing some drawdown and that affects the neighboring wells, that could end up being a problem. So we would want to be able to uh, anticipate that. Another thing that we can do is predict aquifer properties. And the way that this is done is to pump a well, measure the drawdown as a function of time, and then use an analysis that will predict the drawdown as a function of time, a mathematical analysis. And we match the mathematical analysis to the field data by adjusting the properties. And the properties that were of interest here are K, S, and T. And so we adjust those properties It'll really only be two of those three, either K or T. And we adjust those so that we can match the field data with our predicted values. And once we've done that, we have a way to estimate these aquifer properties. And we're also interested in the capture zone of a well. So when we put a well in, we pump the water out, and that well is going to be removing water that has originated from certain location or distribution of locations within the aquifer. And the region over which the well captures is important because that affects the vulnerability of the well to pulling out contaminants. So understanding the capture zone will be important to evaluating the vulnerability of the well to contamination. And indeed, the determining the capture zone is something that is done for evaluating risks of contamination to production wells. So understanding that will require determining the properties of the aquifer, the geometry of the aquifer, and then being able to take those properties in geometry and predict what the analysis or what the um, capture zone is. So let's take a look at what happens when you pump a well to the heads or the drawdown in the vicinity of the well and also at a particular monitoring well. So we're looking down on this aquifer and right here is a pumping well. Over here on the left side is a stream and we'll assume that this is a shallow unconfined aquifer that is uh, interacting with this stream. And we'll also assume that right over here, quite close to the pumping well, is a monitoring well. And we're measuring the drawdown in that monitoring well. And that drawdown is plotted over here on this graph. So when we start off, the um, drawdown is 0. And the drawdown will be plotted here as a color flood. So here, when we're starting out at time, well, at a very short time here, um, essentially it's all blue, all the same color, and that's all zero drawdown. If you look right closely around the well, you'll see that there is, in fact, a little bit of drawdown at this early time. But once we start pumping a little bit more, um, the time is now um, 
10 to the minus 2 that should be yeah 1.0 that should be should be 10 to the minus 2 or 0, 0 0.01 and now you can see that the drawdown shown in this color flood has expanded out so this is our cone of depression here and at the monitoring well we have a little bit of drawdown it's right here so we just have a little bit of drawdown starting to show up at the monitoring well so we pump a little bit longer and now we can see that the drawdown right here the drawdown uh, at this time time of 0.1 is uh, equal to that value and we can see here that the cone of depression has expanded out and now right there is the monitoring well so we can see that clearly the monitoring well is being affected but if we look at the shape of this cone of depression uh, you know just casually it looks like the um, radius of influence or this I guess would be the diameter of influence and it looks like it's about the same in that direction as it is in that direction so it's roughly circular okay well let's keep pumping some more and so we do that the drawdown increases the cone of depression expands out the radius of influence now is this and everything is kind of going along the trend that we saw um, from the previous two slides also what I'd like to point out here is if we look at this plot where we have drawdown as a function of time what I've done is to plot this as a plot time as a function of uh, plot time as a log scale okay so each one of these is a cycle log cycle um, so one uh, one factor of 10 and when we do that the drawdown the drawdown has a, this characteristic shape where it comes up and starts to increase and then in this zone right here the drawdown is increasing as a logarithmic function of time and we can tell that because it plots as a straight line on this semi-log plot it's semi-log because we have this log scale of time drawdown is just a regular linear scale okay so having the drawdown be a log function of time that is a typical characteristic response that occurs when you're pumping in a uniform confined aquifer so this is kind of the idealized response under under ideal conditions okay so that's what's going on so far but now as we continue to pump this cone of depression expands out and so now we start to see something different happening now pretty clearly this outer contour is starting to get deformed a little bit uh, the the radius of influence in this direction is smaller than it is in that direction what's happening here is that the drawdown is starting to interact with the, the stream here so we're assuming that this stream uh, that there's plenty of water in the stream and that by pumping the well we're not going to change the head in the stream so this zone over here this stream stays at constant head so as we're pumping the well we're having drawdown occur over here but we're having less drawdown occur over on the other side where the stream is because the stream is able to keep the head elevated it, it potentially could provide water it could you could have water flowing from the stream into the aquifer and that allows the head to stay higher okay so uh, the uh, right, let's see if we go this is time 2.4 so that would be right in here and what we see on this plot it's it's subtle but if we take this semi-log straight line and we extrapolate it out like that then this time 2.4 would be the time when we first start to notice that the drawdown is not really following a semi-log straight line and then if we keep pumping you can see the drawdown curve here it's going to start to flatten out 
and deviate even further from the semi-log straight line. So we keep pumping some more and here is now uh, the a time of 10 and what we see is that the drawdown contours are even more asymmetric and we're having the drawdown spread quite far out in this direction but we're, it's not really spreading in this direction because of the stream. Uh, the drawdown at the monitoring well is really it's really changing. The slope has, uh, has flattened quite a bit and we're seeing uh, quite, a, quite a significant change in the behavior that occurred earlier. And so what's happening here is the well initially was just um, being affected by the aquifer properties in the vicinity of, of the well and in the vicinity of the monitoring well. But the more you pump, the larger the area that is affected and the larger the area that's affected, the more that it'll interact with other things. And in this case, the stream. There can be a variety of other types of things that the well would interact with as well. So the more we pump, the bigger the area that's affected, the more we're sampling, or the larger area that we're sampling within the aquifer, and the more we see the potential effects of heterogeneities or boundaries. What's typically done is to refer to this stream effect out here as a boundary effect because what, the way it's behaving is as, is as if this is a boundary that is held at constant head. So we keep on pumping out to time is 100 and you can see at this point the drawdown has nearly flattened out and so we're seeing that the drawdown at this point it looks like if, if it flattens out completely then that means that the well is no longer um, causing drawdown to increase and if the heads are not changing then that means that the aquifer is at steady state. So we're pumping this well long enough so we see steady state conditions happen and that's happening because we're able to have water, um, or, well that's happening in general because the well is interacting with the stream and specifically what's happening is that water is flowing out of the stream to the well and it's doing that at a rate that's great enough to simply meet all of the needs of the pumping rate of the well. So because of that it doesn't need to cause any additional drawdown and the well can go to steady state. Okay so that's what's happening conceptually. What we want to do with transient well testing is to, is to implement the process that I just showed you or variations of it. By that I mean we want to stress the well and induce some drawdown using some particular kind of technique and then measure the response. So we cause the stress and we measure the response and then we analyze the results to interpret what's happening. So we want to apply the stress in a controlled way to make the analysis easier and there are three ways that we'll do this. One way is to apply a stress that involves pumping the well at a constant rate. In this case the flow rate at the well is constant and we'll measure the drawdown at the well and more importantly we'll measure it at piezometers. Another possibility is to hold the drawdown in the well constant in which case the drawdown is held constant and we measure flow rate at the well. A third possibility is to change the head in the well or the drawdown suddenly and then measure the drawdown during recovery.